like threw slack in it. Just, I come through there and just So today um, is one of those days I kind of look forward to. We're going to go um, throw a spinnerbait. And, uh, you know, we've done a couple videos in the past with it. This is going to be one of those springtime, this deep, uh, just cover a bunch of water. I got several different spinnerbaits laid out. I actually have a new spinnerbait um, out that this is going to be the first time anybody is going to see it. Um, it's something I'm really excited about. I've been working on for a few years. So, but anyway, I got two or three laid out. We're going to kind of go through, you know, which one I throw where and uh, just talk about everything. Hopefully catch a bunch of fish. We had a really, really cold uh, night last night and it's knocked the water temperature back probably 10 degrees. So, um, it's, I kind of foresee it being a little bit slow until we, you know, that water at sun gets up and then I kind of expect it to be, uh, be a lot better later in the day. Thank you. This might be a really fun day. You know, in this time of year, I mean, obviously these fish, some of these fish are probably resident fish that live in this pocket that we're in now. And, and there'll be some lake fish come in, but the, you know, they're you just gotta kinda imagine that they're, they're not spawning but they're gonna be around that, you know, that spawning area, maybe just like that stump there, or they're not far from where they're gonna spawn right now. And <clears throat> these lake fish that's coming in, all they'll do is make it better. You know, we leave for the classic next week. And one of the reasons I came down here to film today is because I wanted to fish like I think I'm gonna be fishing in the classic. And I wanted to be on a, a an area to gain some confidence. This is where I grew up fishing, this river system, and I don't expect to catch a lot today, but I, the ones we're going to catch I think will be the right ones. Now one of the questions I get most is, number one, do you use a trailer? How often? And which one do you use? You know, 99.9% .9 of the time, unless I'm burning the spinnerbait for smallmouth, I've always used a trailer. And it really, the trailer depends on how I want the bait to, how I want the bait to be fished. You know, um, if I want to slow it down, then I'll go to a bigger trailer. Um, you know, more plastic where it slows the bait down and then if I want it to move faster, you know, if I want, for instance, I'm throwing a half ounce right now and I want it to get down there because the water's pretty cold. So I'm using a pretty light trailer where I can keep that bait deep. Uh, and I really use three, you know, I, this is a smaller swimming dinger. And then there's the big swimming dinger that's got a little more plastic and then the Yum Pulse. Those are really the three that, that I use. Uh, you know, color, it's just matching the spinnerbait, trying to make it the same. Uh, I don't know that action really matters because your blade and your bait moving is going to create a action no matter what you put on there. I mean, you could put a, I could put a, uh, you know, like a yum, like a sonar minna, just a straight tail bait and it's going to kick the bait. So. Action's not the biggest deal for me. It's just about the amount of plastic, but it's letting me uh, keep that bait down there deeper. We started this morning and the water 
you know, it was 50, literally when we put in 30 minutes ago, it was 51 and it's already to 52. And we're fishing pretty dirty water today. It's gonna heat up fast. I mean, just with the sun, that dirty water will heat up fast. And that's what, that's what will trigger um, them, I think, to really bite and get up there. And sun, it's, uh, you know, they're definitely like pre-spawn. So, you know, it's all about, they want a sun and, and get ready for uh, the spawn. So literally they can be anywhere, but they ain't gonna be very deep. Even if they're out here like on this dock or something, they're gonna be right underneath the surface because they want that sunlight. Especially on this colder, cold morning. You know, that first bite that I had back there, um, that's a really good sign because even though the water is as cold as he was, I mean, as cold as it is, he was literally a foot off the bank. I mean, just right on the edge of some rocks. I think what's gonna happen is it'll just be one of those, one here, one there. And then I think the magic number is like 55. When that water hits about 55, they ought to, I mean, it ought to, they ought to just really, there's, look at that swirl right there. They ought to really go to biting. You know, a lot of times you hear us talk about fish that stage. Um, what that means is kind of, it's kind of their last little hold up before they move. Uh, I shouldn't say the last one because literally they can stage like at the mouth of this creek in an area, <clears throat> you know, the weather warm up, they pull back here and stage. But I know with the full moon and stuff, they're not far from spawning. I mean, all they're waiting on is the water temperature to get right. But like that dock right there, you know, I, I know that there'll be fish spawning in that little pocket. And that right there would be a perfect place for a couple of big ones to set up, you know, out here and just stage, just kind of hang around sun. And then when it's time, they just ease up there and uh, and spawn. And staging areas differ for every lake. Like, you know, Grand Lake, they like to, sp they like to stage around them boat docks, you know, the mouths of them pockets and creeks and ledges, brush piles. Every lake's different kind of where they stage at, but it's for sure that they stage everywhere. And if that's what you want to find is those little old staging areas because that's where the big ones hang out and that's where you can uh you'll catch multiples a lot of times you know on this river it's t it's pretty shallow so a lot of these staging areas will be like three foot you know i've seen some staging areas be 20 table rock 10 killer inches of water like i've seen it come out of that rock black big old black spot okay smoked it big old bait three quarter ounce bait covert you're probably wondering if you're fishing in inches of water why would you throw a three quarter and not a you know a three eighths or a ha even a half the reason is is because it's pre-spawn and I want a big bait and I want this big blade. If I were to put this big blade on a half or something like that, it would literally, you know, I would have to go so slow. So, you know, I can kind of counter that big head with this big blade and still be able to move it pretty quick. And as dirty as the water is, I want to get their attention, you know, and it changes for every, it can change for every cast. That's why you'll see, I got three spinner baits laid up here. The only thing I mean, I mean they have in common is uh, they all have Colorado blades. The water's low 50s. 
But I have two half ounce laid up there and then this big three quarter. You know, and, and you know, as I get, as the day gets warmer and I want that bait to be higher, you know, they, I feel like they get more aggressive and I'll go to that smaller, you know, I'll go to a half. But I want to keep this bait down right now out of sight. And I can just fish it so much faster. Even though I'm going slow, you know, I'm still moving the bait. And I'm still trying to figure out, you know, with that being so cool, I'm kind of expecting there be some fish, you know, halfway back to the boat. And it's just so hard to fish that half ounce that far now, if, you know, Today I figure out exactly what's going on. Tomorrow if I were to come back and I knew the areas and I really wanted to slow down and, and trick them, I'd probably, you know, I, I, I would maybe switch to that half. But, you know, spinnerbait's just a, it's just a bait that, I mean, I could pick up e any one of these three spinnerbaits and throw it all day and catch fish. But I think whenever you dial in you know, the right weight and the right blade size and still be able to move, uh, cover water. That's whenever you, you know, you go from a good day to a great day. This water's so dirty, you know, you're, and cold your strike zone's not real big. So I mean, I'm going pretty slow and just, that tells you right there they're not biting. They're not just aggressive. I mean, just a little patch of weeds and it took two casts. I mean, I came right through it and then made another cast. Had to make him react. That was on the half ounce. Uh, covert. The reason I picked it up, we're still in, you know, the right kind of stuff for a three quarter, but like target casting, you know, I'm, I'm trying to lay it up there in them weeds quietly and it's just hard to do it with that three quarter. So, I mean, I can fish this like a three quarter, you know, you just got to reel it a little bit slower and if I'm throwing at targets, you know, especially these weeds where I expect those fish to be laying about you know, right where I'm casting, I gotta go down just so I can lay it up there quietly. I can, I can kinda roll it over those weeds too. You know, you'll see me when I come across, kinda pop it and move it. Just, it blows my mind how shallow, I mean, like when that fish came out, I mean, you, you could tell when I hooked him, he, he was inches deep. I don't really think these fish go deeper than five or six foot all winter long. Oh. That's one thing that surprises me. I'm, that's the third little one I've caught. Normally don't, this time of year down here, you normally don't catch a lot of little ones. It's, they're all usually good ones. That dude hit it like it hit the water. So I know what's going on. We've spent a lot of time fishing shallow. And these fish are shallow, but they want to be close to, uh, they want to be close to deep water. And I think that just boils down to uh, the night that we had you know, they're, if I was guessing, they're probably still a week or two weeks from really flooding the bank. But every fish that you catch kind of tells you something. You just, sometimes there'll be one, you know, random one that'll kind of try to lead you in the wrong direction, but every one of them tells you something. And that's what, five or six, seven, eight bites that all kind of come on this. They're coming on different stuff like weeds, rock. But the only thing consistent is they're all they're all shallow, but they're close to deep water. 
I keep trying to get up there, you know, way back in some of the stuff where there's 50 yards to three foot of water and it's just not, not the deal today because of that front that came through. So we're gonna start concentrating more on a little bit steeper stuff. How I fish this bait kind of really depends on the time of year. It's really, it boils down to two things. Um, you know, whenever we used to fish my uncles and stuff, it's the question was, um, are you out of sight or are you seeing your bait? You know, what that means is, you know, am I keeping that bait up where I can see the bait and see the strike or is it down out of sight? And, I kind of usually pre-spawn, it's down out of sight. Like they just, it's just something they're deeper. And what I try to do when I do that is kind of split the, split the water column. You know, if I'm in two foot, I want to run the bait a foot or so. If I'm in five, you know, down two or three foot, just kind of split it. Um, and you'll kind of figure out you know, if they're up close to the bank or out, and it changes, it changes from day to day, it changes, you know, even from creek to creek, sometimes based on just the water color. And that's the same with, no matter if I'm throwing a half, a three quarter, or one ounce. You know, whenever, whenever it gets really, really fun is, and everybody's done it, is whenever you can throw that thing up there and you can just see that blade turning and it's almost like a topwater bite. That's whenever you can cover a lot of water, but we're still kind of, we're still early. So I'm trying to like, you know, even though I still haven't had a bite doing it, I'm trying to fish it out and see if I can't find a group of fish that's not kind of staging out in front of that stuff a little bit. Problem is, is we're running, they're running so much current in this river that those fish really just can't sit out here and swim around. They got to get up next to something or they're going to be tired of swimming. Like threw slack in it. Just, I come through there and just, poof. gosh, I should have been in here. I should have been in here more today. There's just, this is just the right kind of stuff, you know, mouth these little pockets with these weeds and stuff. But also I said this morning it was going to get better as the day went on. And that's exactly, I mean, it's just warming up the water temperatures gotten warmer not a lot honestly but that sun's high and them they're getting up there where they need to be at where we can catch them <clears throat> also found just some good looking water you know i mean it's not i don't mind fishing that real dirty stuff as long as it's been dirty for a long time i feel like a couple of those creeks that we went in this morning they were they were not too dirty but i think that dirt was fresh i think that mud has, was just coming in and a lot of times they really don't like that unless it's like after the spawn it's fresh water and stuff but yeah i just think we was in we wasn't around the right kind of stuff First one on wood today. Just an old stump sticking out there. So what I'm throwing, you know, is a covert. I got three different variations. This is just a half ounce, you know, single Colorado. You guys have seen me throw that 800 million times. That's kind of the, the target bait. When I say target bait, like if I'm throwing at rocks or something like that, and then slow rolling it, big three quarter, still a single Colorado and then the new bait. Look at there. 
little baby brother. That's the uh, Covert Finesse. You know, I really designed this for two reasons. One is that late summer, um, you know, when fishing kind of gets tough, you want a smaller profile. But also like in some places like the Sabine where fish, you know, they just don't get that big where you need something smaller, just some of these lakes and then high pressured situations, you know, if, if I'm fishing, uh, you know, and there's a lot of fishing pressure and I feel like that I need to throw something smaller, I'll pick up the, uh, the finesse here. It still has a big hook and the cool thing about it is a lot of these small spinner baits are, uh, you know, you'll, you'll see like a quarter, maybe a five sixteenths. And this is a half that comes in a half and three eighths. It's just got a small profile. It's just something a little bit different. It's something that I've kind of been playing with for a few years. Uh, not so much the components cause it's the same. It's just a smaller profile as, uh, it's big brother. But it's just something that I, you know, I wanted to throw and get a lot of confidence in before I, before I brought it out. But it's, um, it's a bait that you're probably going to see me throw in the classic some because that's for sure going to be a high pressured situation. What a way to end the day. Like that's the, that was the best bite that I've had. Not the biggest fish, but the best bite. I mean, just that big blade was thump, 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 and it just, has it been the best spinnerbait day ever? But it hasn't been the worst either. So it's been fun. We've had a good day. Hopefully you guys uh, learned something and I sure do appreciate you riding along.